Um, in this video, I want to just show you some support material that we've added to the My City page. So I'm inside My City, I'm inside Block 3, Graded Unit. And if I scroll down through here, um, I'm going to click through the Support Material tab. And in here, I've got uh, th three pages. Um, I'm going to go through two of them, actually. I'm going to go through these first two pages here, Automation and Capitalism in the 21st Century, and Automation and Contraptions in Art. So let's click through here. Um, what I've done is uh, upload some texts um, that I think you might be interested in, and I'm going to stop and talk about uh, three of them. Um, Paul Mason is a journalist, he's a political theorist, but most of all he thinks about um, economics. And he wrote a book called Post-Capitalism. And in post-capitalism, he describes um, a world where possibly automation begins to take over labour, or manual labour, uh, to be exact. Post-capitalism is a rather dystopian view of what might happen when robots begin to take our jobs. Um, and he positions himself uh, as a Marxist throughout. So he's clearly talking about labour, the value of labour, and the division of labour. Um, likewise, Mark Fisher um, uh, is thinking about much the same thing in his book, Capitalist Realism. But Mark Fisher is a dedicated Marxist, so it's not just peppered with ideas drawn from Marxism, but instead uh, post-capitalism, uh, or capitalist realism, sorry, is a Marxist polemic on capitalism. Um, and as a, as a consequence, it's quite dystopian as well. Um, Naomi Klein's The Shock Doctrine, and in fact, more than The Shock Doctrine, um, her book, This Changes Everything, is a much more upbeat idea about what happens in a capitalist society when automation begins to replace labour. And Naomi Klein thinks that, I guess, this is um, an opportunity for us. And I guess Paul Mason touches on this as well in his book, Post Capitalism. But Naomi Klein thinks this is an opportunity for us to use the time saved to become much more social and to participate and undertake recreational facilities so we can grow ourselves intellectually as robots take over our jobs. Um, so she thinks that this is a, there's, a, there's a, an opportunity for a sort of social awakening in an automated post-capitalist society. Um, I'm just going to very, very quickly, and forgive my speed here, but I'm going to go very quickly uh, through um, some examples of automation used in uh, art practice. So here we've got Jean Tangley, and Jean Tangley uh, wasn't a Swiss artist who died in about 1991, um, and he's known for his kinetic um, and sculptural uh, mechanistic machines. But this drawing here, I think it's not kinetic, it's not moving, it's just a drawing, but I think it brilliantly describes parts, at least some of the processes that Tangley um, went through in his studio practice. Um, uh, certainly Tangley, uh, to a greater or lesser degree, satirised automation and uh, technological overproduction um, in the workplace and of material goods. Um, I'm just scrolling through here. We've got an example from Joseph Beuys. Uh, Joseph Beuys, a German sculptor. Um, uh, Beuys worked with a fairly limited range of materials. We find things like uh, found mechanical objects, um, uh, felt oftentimes, and in this case, um, he uses honey. Um, so this work, uh, consists of a series of pipes uh, which run through rooms and up staircases 
and um, the inside the pipes is honey which has been pumped around his contraption that he makes. Um, I think he uses honey as a sort of uh, metaphor for social organisation um, and I guess a metaphor for social change as well. Um, the Hilla and Bert Becker, let me just click through this link. Some of these uh, links are, um, are movies or films, but for whatever reason, um, Zoom won't record films as they play. So you'll have to look through all of the links to films in your own time. In fact, you should look through the whole document in your own time. But let's just click through Hill and Bern Becker, who were German photographers. And um, what the Beckers did was create typographies when they photographed stuff. And most often than not, the stuff that they photographed was somehow industrial or mechanised. So in this screen here, we've got um, some blast furnaces. And uh, you'll see that they're all the same, but they're all slightly different. Um, they're all uh, um, photographed under similar circumstances, uh, but were photographed at different locations. Okay, same thing. Same sort of hazy weather circumstances with different locations and different objects. So in this way, they created a typology or a taxonomy of objects. Um, we've got uh, Leonardo's drawings, Leonardo da Vinci. As we know, Leonardo da Vinci was a scientist, an engineer, and an artist. In many ways, a biologist in this particular uh, image and he makes hugely detailed drawings of the mechanics of the body in this case. But we also know that um, Leonardo da Vinci had uh, drawings for helicopters and for winged travel, what we may call a plane now. Um, so Leonardo da Vinci um, uh, incredibly um, observant of technology and automation and try to apply that to new inventions that he would draw out. Uh, we've got Eduardo Palazzi, let's click through Palazzi. And although Palazzi was, Palazzi was a pop artist, um, uh, and although we don't see Palazzi creating automation, he used the language of automation and mechanization in his work. So we see cogs and belts and chimneys and or what have you. Um, we see automation played out in his still images. They were very much still images though. Um, and and Pelotz is definitely someone worth um, investigating quite rigorously if you get some time. Um, crash um, uh, at the uh, was an exhibition put on in response to the J.G. Ballard novel of the same name. Um, uh, uh, Ballard's concerned with um, uh, humans and their technological environment um, uh, and the exhibition Crash at the Gagosian Gallery in London. Let's just click through that. Um, used the observations of J.G. Ballard um, in the exhibition and then brought these observations into something visual. So, you know, we see, and of course, you know, it's really about the fetishization of, um, of transport uh, and particularly of cars. Um, and there's an there's in 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 J. G. Bauer's book we find this sort of um, eroticization of accidents, a fetishization of accidents, um, hence crash. Uh, so we've got some aircraft wheels. Um, uh, we got what else we got? Um, 
bits of cars and we see here the sort of smash logo on the wall. Okay, bits of detritus from an accident. Quickly, uh, so that's crash again. Drill into this, spend some time with it, and read about the exhibition um, and read about Ballard. Uh, don't just click through it or past it as fast as I'm going just now. Um, Carsten Holler is um, a German artist and he was. Um, a scientist and engineer, much like many of the early computer art pioneers, um, uh, Holler was a scientist or is a scientist and engineer, and he lets his work be informed by that training. And uh, he is thinking about how science um, uh, explores or can explore the human relationship. Uh, with technology, um, and if I could, if we could play through this, then we'd get an opportunity to have a wee closer look. Uh, Namjoon Pike, obviously, we've visited Namjoon Pike before. Um, he was a Korean audio-visual artist, um, and we see Pike um, constructing sculptures from pieces of technology. But of course, Pike was interested in media. Uh, and media technologies. He was also a sound artist or a sound designer as well as a filmmaker. And so we see um, these aspects of his interest being literally built into sculptures. Um, so, you know, in many ways still holding on to the traditional ideas of what a sculpture should be. It's not just the screen for Namjoon Pike at this point. It's the assembly of screens which interests uh, Pike at the moment. Um, Sharamanka is in uh, Glasgow and we had hoped to go down and see Sharamanka. It's at Trongate 103, which will be closed just now. Um, but Sharamanka is a musical and mechanical theatre event. It should be viewed in a linear fashion and we see um, an episodic uh, performance um, unveil itself to us. Um, but all of the actors in this case are pieces of, um, you know, stuff all, all joined together, bits of mechanical, um, uh, almost mechanical junk pieced together, um, but pieced in such a way that it evokes uh, really quite a beautiful. Um, uh, sense of calm and excitement. Simon Starling um, uh, is a Turner Prize winner. He's a GSA graduate. Um, he studied undergraduate and MFA at Glasgow School of Art. And his work is made like Sharamanka from found objects. And his interests are um, installations, sculptures, uh, films and photographs. Uh, certainly, you really should click through all of our movie links um, to get a better idea of each of these artists. Okay. Um, Jim Whiting um, uh, is uh, born in France, I think, but is British, and he's an artist, inventor. Um, he studied electronic engineering and systems control. Wow. Um, in Queen Mary College and then applied that when he studied art at St Martin's School of Art in London. And um, his interests are very much, if I click through here, his interests are very much musical, musical theatre. Um, okay, cool. Um, oops. And the next one, I think, is Theo Janssen, um, who is a Dutch artist and inventor. Um, and this guy is just amazing. He creates these uh, cybernetic um, beings, these mammoth um, contraptions that, using wind power, can walk along a beach then he makes them out of cane or plastic tubing um, and he creates them in such a way 
that they walk almost like insects, but unlike insects, they're absolutely mammoth. Okay, so Theo Jensen, um, definitely one to check out. Uh, we've included some videos here, uh, which might be fun for you to watch. We've got Herbie Hancock um, and Rocket, which is a sort of uh, 80s video which incorporates uh, Jim White and Robots. We've got Charlie Chaplin, um, which is a polemical video, it's a criticism of uh, automation and automation of the workforce. Um, if you haven't watched uh, Modern Times, then you absolutely must click through the link um, on the VLE page and watch that. It's a uh, uh, searingly damning of uh, capitalist shortcutting and ways to try and exploit labour. Um, Terry Gilliam's film, Brazil, um, is, uh, is just a, a postmodern phantasmagoria film. Um, uh, he's chucked everything at this. This is definitely Gilliam's magnum opus. And I think, um, I'm, I'm, I just can't even, I don't even know where to begin to describe this film. It's absolutely sensational. So click through and watch the entire thing if you can. Um, we've included another uh, um, few links for you to uh, follow through. Um, uh, Blair Somerville's um, contraptions, for example, um, he's an artist inventor who just has amassed so much junk, so many objects and found stuff, um, and then tinkers with it all just on a constant basis um, to create fun, whimsical objects, uh, sometimes uh, uh, sometimes working, sometimes the move, sometimes kinetic, oftentimes just sculptural and static. Uh, but he is um, a, a fabulous collector and tinkerer. Um, obviously, I think we uh, probably have seen uh, Marcel Duchamp's The Bride Strip Bear by her bachelor, uh, bachelors, and probably seen that in context class. Um, and Peter Fishley and David Weiss um, are the artists who create um, massive cause and effect installations, um, which remind me of a wee game that I used to play when I was a wee boy called Mousetrap, where something knocks um, something else down, a ball, say for example, the ball rolls down a slope and knocks something else down and the whole thing cascades from there um, and they're absolutely fascinating and I can't imagine how much time they take to assemble. So definitely have a look at uh, Fishley and Vice's installations. And um, we also have uh, included uh, down here at the bottom of this um, handout um, ideas about architecture as well, and one of the ideas that um, I think Dave especially likes is um, this uh, uh, utopian um, city design where uh, cities can get up and move around. Cities become these mechanical objects in themselves, these mammoth mechanical objects. Um, uh, obviously, this is an impossibility. Uh, but if we uh, click through um, uh, some of the links that are included here about, uh, about architecture and these utopian ideas, what we find actually are the drawings themselves of these mechanical cities are in fact very, very beautiful. Um, and then uh, we're going to finish with um, uh, Paul Clay and um, Twittering Machine. Uh, it's what a wonderful painting this is. I think it's one of Dave's favourites, actually. And um, you can see that Clay has uh, created an, a static image. It's a painting. Um, but he's alluding to uh, uh, mechanisation with the handle over here on the right of the image. And we think if we wind that handle uh, round, then these twittering birds, which he's drawn, 
will, will you know enact something. They'll move. Um, so uh, Paul Clay uh, really nodding to possibly interaction um, in 1922, uh, and definitely um, kinetic sculpture and kinetic art. Um, okay, we've got some movies down here at the bottom that you might want to uh, look at. Again, I'm not going to click through these just now, but I would urge you to look at them all in your own time. And I'm going to finish just by quickly clicking through this third page here, um, where we've got some interactive installation performances. Uh, again, you're going to have to look through this in your own time. But we've got examples of um, VGN and live coding. Um, we've got some examples uh, of um, uh, motion tracking and uh, mapping onto surfaces. So we can create, or we see examples here, where, we create, where artists have created um, the illusion of space within a space. Uh, and it's absolutely fabulous. Um, so have a look through all of that. Okay, that's me done.